welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today we're having a serious discussion on something that's called refeeding syndrome. This video is about eating disorders, uh, complications of eating disorders, and especially when a person is malnourished, meaning they haven't gotten enough nutrients in their body for an extended amount of time, how their body adapts to that in a negative way, and what happens when we start to nourish again. And this goes back to all of my, my eating disorder recovery videos regarding how important it is that if you or someone you know has an eating disorder, uh, re regardless of where someone is in that journey, the importance of working with a treatment team, meaning a therapist who specializes in the treatment of eating disorders, a dietitian that specializes in the treatment of, uh, of eating disorders, a psychiatrist that understands the ins and outs of that, um, and a medical doctor as well, just to make sure that we have medical stability happening. And in all of those, those areas, we need to have the specialist, not just um, a generic type of doctor. So anyways, back to what I was saying, refeeding syndrome is a very, very serious condition. And it happens when a body adapts to not having enough, enough nourishment. So if someone is malnourished, they're not getting enough macronutrients, they're not getting enough um, fats, carbs, and proteins, or micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals, their body has to adapt to a certain degree in order to survive that. And that can happen in a very short amount of time. It just kind of depends on um, what the difference is between the person, what the person was doing and what they're doing now. So we're working with our treatment team, we're working on eating disorder recovery, we know that this person is malnourished, they haven't been eating or nourishing their butt, their body enough or well enough. So when we start the track for mechanical eating, getting back on track, eating every three or so hours, or even bridging into intuitive eating where there's more flexibility in food choice and listening to hunger and fullness cues, we have to be very careful for refeeding syndrome, okay? Um, as our body adapts to malnourishment, being in a malnourished state, it really disrupts namely our electrolytes. So we're looking at potassium, we're looking at phosphorus, we're looking at magnesium, we're looking at a lot of specific things related to electrolytes and balance and how that implicates your heart and your electrical system within your body. So when we start to feed again, it's, we're in this treatment team, we're really keeping an eye on, on blood work, we're looking at things relating to what they're eating, how they're eating it, the consistency of which they're doing that, and the frequency. All of this is being monitored so that the person does not get more sick. If someone goes into refeeding syndrome and it's not monitored and they're, they're just kind of eating kind of normally too quickly, really scary things can and have happened. So let's talk about a little bit more about refeeding syndrome and what it is and what it affects it as far as the body and what we can do about it. Let's first start with the topic of eating disorders because yes, of course, this is where we see a lot of refeeding syndrome complications, but there are also other situations where we would have to monitor this. So things that come to mind are like malabsorption disorders, chronic pancreatitis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. We are looking at things like someone who has cancer or is going through chemotherapy, radiation. These are things that we'd want to, to look at as well. Someone with uncontrolled diabetes, unmedicated diabetes, we're not monitoring blood glucose, anything like that. We'd want to, to watch out for that. Also chronic alcohol use and chronic overuse of antacids or diuretics. And that makes sense because if we're really misusing something that is flushing the food and the nourishment from that food out of our bodies before it's metabolically digested, then we're not absorbing the full content of those macro and micronutrients. So these are also just kind of other situations outside of an eating disorder, you know, with like maybe anorexia or bulimia that we really have to watch out for um, refeeding syndrome as well. Let's talk real quick about carbohydrates and the role of carbohydrates in metabolism throughout malnourishment and then through the adjustment of refeeding again as we're beginning to nourish. 
So we talked about that adaptation adaptation process. Your body has to adapt to not getting enough nutrients, and it can up to a certain point until really uh, scary medical complications or even death can occur. So upon starting to nourish our bodies again, the metabolism of how, uh, well, I guess I should say, how we begin to correctly metabolize carbohydrates changes back over to how it should be, right? How the, the healthy state of um, metabolizing carbohydrates. So when refeeding begins, so does the normal carbohydrate, that's hard for me to say today, metabolism. Your body will reach really deep for micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals, to get the job done. But if the stores are too low, you will begin to feel the ill effects from it. So, so the electrolytes and the carbohydrates are really what we're looking at when your body is starting to pivot back over into, oh, okay, we're getting consistent nourishment here. We have to make sure that your body can handle that in an appropriate way. So the rule basically for trying to prevent refeeding syndrome is low and slow. And what that means is we're so excited that you are recovering and you are ready and you are learning how to nourish your body and you're being able to be compliant with that. Let's do this in a very slow, low way to see how your specific body because everybody's body is the same, but also not the same. It's different. Everybody's story is different. So we have to make sure that your specific individual body is adjusting to that in a way that is appropriate and safe. And even though we all have bodies that all metabolize all of the food, everybody's recovery journey and everybody's um, risk factor for having refeeding syndrome is different. So we have to really look at it closely, individually. Something that your doctor or your treatment team might be really looking at, the specific deficiencies, we're looking at phosphate uh, deficiencies. If we are deficient in that or if it's really adjusting in a wonky way through refeeding, we could see things um, like muscle weakness, I have it pulled up here, muscle weakness, trouble breathing, double vision, swallowing problems, seizure coma, and just a heart weakening. The, the heart cannot keep up with the uptick in uh, food intake that has happened recently. Another thing we want to look out for is magnesium deficiency. So magnesium is very important in the metabolic process and the deficiency of that or a, a deficiency in that or a huge uptick in that can cause issues too. So we're looking at nausea and vomiting, tremors, muscle spasms, seizures, coma, abnormal heart rhythms, uh, arrhythmia, things like that. So that's with the magnesium. We're also looking at potassium. You heard me mention that a little bit earlier. Um, more severe deficiencies, we could see things, again, similar to the others. Muscle weakness, muscle cramping, fatigue, uh, severe constipation due to paralyzed bowel movements, arrhythmias, and respiratory failure. Other things, not going into huge detail about it because they all kind of mimic and mirror each other to a certain degree. Uh, thiamine, which is a vitamin B1 deficiency, uh, body fluid disturbances. So we're specifically looking at the kidney functioning during this, um, as well as any symptoms of edema. And we want to look at blood sugar. So we want to make sure we're not in the hyperglycemic or hypoglycemic during uh, the renourishment as well. So that's, I think those are the big things I wanted to get through. But as you can see, it's really complicated. And it even goes above my brain cell capacity to understand. And that's why it's so important to work with the team. The registered dietitian and the doctor that specialize in eating disorders are really the main and most important components when it comes to being able to stay away from refeeding syndrome. I'm just the therapist. <laughs> um, so, but, th but things that I've seen in the past are, you know, as someone is beginning to nourish their body again, their doctor will put them on um, potassium or phosphorus or magnesium or something like those types of supplements to make sure that as they're beginning to nourish their body, all of those micronutrients are staying balanced enough to not put them into a severe compromised position. 
Why am I telling you all of this? It's certainly not to scare you, but it is something that people aren't really educated on. A lot of people have assumptions about eating disorders, assumptions about recovery. I hear it all the time. She's finally eating again. He's finally eating again. I'm so happy. I just want to drive, drive through and get whatever I can. I just want to like have that weight restoration happen as soon as possible. And it's understandable because the loved ones are concerned. And when they finally start seeing motivation around food intake, it's exciting. But not a lot of people really consider the metabolic cellular processes that are happening during refeeding. Our body has adjusted to a certain degree and in a negative consequential way to malnourishment. We cannot just swing the other way willy-nilly because we're excited that someone is eating again. It's very complex, it's very complicated, and it takes a team of people to uh, really survey and monitor that person throughout the process. Now, once BMI and once weight stabilization or weight recovery is in a certain place, then we can kind of back off. We can see that the system is working well and working better than it has in a long time, which also is just a huge blessing that we can go from such a state that's so scary and unpredictable to a place of everything can work normally again with a lot of consistency, a lot of monitoring, a lot of support and encouragement. So hopefully this gives you guys not only some hope that you or a loved one can recover from an eating disorder or from any other kind of medical thing that's going on to where you are um, malnourished or compromised in that way, but also that there are people in this world and in the medical field and in the me mental health field that can support you through that every step of the way with this additional knowledge that is just so important to have, so critical to our care, to our long well-being into the future, all of that. So I hope you learned a little something today. And again, as always, thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.